Buntry. You knew Buntry, right? Yeah. He was um Suge Knight muscle, right? Yeah, Buntry had a lot of muscle. Buntry, chocolate muscle, man. <laughs> Tell me about Buntry. Well, Buntry was just a real nigga. That's all. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't no punk, and he put in work. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of the mob and blood niggas, that's what they did. They don't. They didn't do a lot of talking. You know what I mean? So <laughs> we had some real protection, real security on death row. So you had the mob security, and then you had the popo security who took the fall for what the mob security did. So the illegal was legal. See, the thing about it is what people don't understand about Suge, okay? Suge had a lot of respect with the niggas in the hood, but the respect and the power came from them because Suge, he used to play football. He come from a middle-class family. You know what I mean? He was a good dude. He was a good dude. He wasn't all bad, but the money, the power, it began to engulf him. And he didn't know what to do with it. He couldn't handle it. Because, you know, most artists supposed to be on the magazine. And they the one doing the record. Next thing you know, all you saw was Suge Knight on the magazine. Him and his Rose Roy. Do you think that was like the beginning of the downfall of Death Row when Suge Knight wasn't playing the back no more and he was getting on magazines and, you know, doing stuff like that? No, I wouldn't say a magazine is all bad. But the beginning and the downfall of Death Row came in when you start mixing gangbanging with the music. <laughs> That's your downfall right there. Mixing the streets with the music. You should have left the music with the music and the streets with the streets. And if you're going to have some muscle, it's okay to have your muscle. But you can't be having the security guards and the females that you're Messing with, sleeping with, living better than your artists. What the hell? So Suge Knight, the females he was messing with, was living better than, you know, the artists on Death Row? Oh, yes. Definitely. Definitely. Tell me about that. Well, you know, you got females that mess with Suge, and they got houses and cars and... You know, they able to just swap, swipe, and spin, swipe, and spin, and we the one put all in, put up, put in all the work on the records. Yeah, that's what happens most times. And um, at this time, you was cool with Sharita tonight. So, how did you feel seeing Suge Knight missing with all these women, knowing that you know? You was cool with Sharita, and you knew he was cheating. And well, I told Suge like this, and, you know, he called me um, a snitch bitch. Because <laughs> I guess technically that's what I was back then. But he knew because I told him, if you do anything in front of my face that's morally incorrect, I'm going to tell your wife. So if you don't want to be with Sharita, then divorce her. But don't be a cheater, because I told him God going to get you. You know what I'm saying? And that's another thing. People are attacking me. Oh, she, in one minute she threatened Danny Boy, the next minute she mentioned God. God loves me. God loves you. You have to deal with God on your own terms. I'm going to balance it out. I'm going to let people know. I love God, and I know that God loves me, but I'm not perfect. But don't push me. Because people in the Bible, like Peter, he cut somebody's ear off. Just because you're in the church, it doesn't mean you're a punk. Now, God says, hold your peace and let me fight your battles. So that's what I've been doing. I've been holding my peace. And I've been letting the Lord fight my battles. That's why I ain't in jail. That's why, you know, I ain't crazy. And, and you know what I'm saying? I haven't had to roll around with, you know, too many guns. You know what I'm saying? Because I left it all to the Lord. So after I left death row, I changed my life for the better. You know what I'm saying? Like Snoop said, when you start having kids and stuff like that, 
you have to better yourself. I don't want my kids bringing me no box to jail saying, hey, mama, you looking good in that orange jumpsuit. But if I had to wear the orange, I think orange is my color. I'd rather not, but I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? This is real life we're dealing with here, people. <clears throat> you would have to be on death row to understand death row. You got Dr. Dre and Michelle A. They was, you know, a couple. And, um, you know, out of nowhere, you know, Michelle A. started, you know, messing around with um, Suge Knight. When did you find out that um, Michelle A. and Suge Knight was messing around? Now, I didn't find out that Miss L.A. was messing with Suge to like, years later. I think, what, 2016, 2017? I had no idea because Sharitha was like Miss L.A.'s, she was the godmother to her children. So that, like, really threw me for a loop. But you have to understand, I married my husband and I left death row. So I would only come back and forth maybe as a feature or to do someone's project because I'm not going to be around or stay around anywhere where I'm not being treated fairly or correctly. And you know, my husband, Will, he was a big time man and he made sure I had everything I needed when he was out on the street. So it was no reason for me to just keep hanging around there. So a lot of things that they are saying now, I don't know if they really have too much truth to it or not because I wasn't there. Now, I've learned to respect Miss Chalet as a woman, but I think that that's a pretty low down dirty thing to <clears throat> not only have a relationship with Sharitha, but be with Dr. Dre first and then turn around and mess with you. That's, I never would be comfortable with that. But that's her business. You know what I'm saying? If, if that was her choice, that was her choice. But I didn't know at the time, because had I known at the time, I would have first told Suge that wasn't right, and then secondly, you know, told Sharitha. 